Now I say new, but this build isn't exactly new. There was a guy named Nerotox who I have linked their video down below that played a very similar setup last league. However, this league, we have tier 17 maps and tier 17 maps are insanely dangerous. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we have these style of maps that can roll just absurd modifiers on them. Now, the reason that I say this is new is because I believe that last league, the setup that I was using was probably one of the more efficient setups that existed. It did as much damage as humanly possible while still being tanky enough to handle most of the hardest content in the game. This league with tier 17s, we need something a lot tankier. And because of that, we're going to do a lot less damage. There's not gonna be any billions of DPS or like hundreds of millions of DPS here. We're trying to get in the like 30 to 40 million DPS range while being nigh unkillable. But as you'll see here in a moment when we'll do this map, it doesn't really matter how tanky you are. Some of these tier 17 mods are just simply too much. Now I'm going to jump into this map real quick to give you an idea of what this build looks like, how it plays before I talk about the nitty gritty of stuff. But this is going to be a tier 17 map. I've rolled it so that it has high scarabs, high currency. We are on a back to basics tree. This is a pretty standard back to basics tree. We've essentially just scaled the modifiers as hard as humanly possible, meaning that in general, these maps are extremely dangerous. Beyond that, we're using pretty standard setup. Um, rare monsters have two additional modifiers. This makes the rares significantly tankier. There are packs of them and there's some hunted traders since back to basics disables a bunch of stuff. Go ahead and run this. Now, notably, I do keep embers of rats and embers of frogs to get rid of specific mob types. Like these bloody burrowers are really annoying. They leave this boiling blood ground that can kill you pretty easily. And like mobs that do corpse explosion and stuff like that, I pretty much get rid of, but everything else doesn't really matter. So. This is a back to basics tier 17 map. The mobs are extremely tanky and they do a ton of damage. If you are familiar with how these maps run, you know just how difficult these maps can be. Now, that being said, um, the build is extremely tanky. The DPS is quite good for what it is. Now you could use a headhunter instead of a mage blood if you wanted to do more damage and you wanted a more chaotic playstyle. I would say. But this is the basis of it. You can see we're doing plenty of damage to be able to kill these rares. Um, the mods aren't too insane, but realistically you just can't roll the mods too insane. The reason why divine orbs are so cheap this league is because people are using so many chaos to reroll these maps that it is increasing the value of chaos like relative to what divine orbs are. That's the whole reason that this is happening. But unfortunately, these tier 17 maps are still going to have mods like Sawblades is one of the mods that you can see on here. There's always gonna be some kind of mod on these tier 17 maps that just kind of makes the map not fun. That makes you have to play it in a different way or it can just instantly give your build and there's not really anything that you can do about it. But you have to run these maps pretty aggressively. Like you have to roll them very aggressively. Now, I've been able to do two or three damage mods relatively reliably. I die a lot more in those like two or three damage mod maps because we're talking like four or five hundred percent gained. Um, I'm going to hit Berserk here so I can kill this guy. We're talking like four or five hundred percent of, you know, physical damage gained as elemental and like crit and all kinds of crazy stuff that gets scaled to the moon by back to basics, right? So like these, I have 220 percent less recovery. These mods scale insanely high, right? So when you get a bunch of damage mods and those damage mods scale insanely high, turns out you can die pretty easily. Now, I have basically put just enough damage into this build that it can kill these kinds of enemies like this, right? Like I can, I can kill the boss, right? It's not super fast by any means, but he can die relatively quickly. It's, it's not too horrible. I don't need to worry too much about the damage that he does, right? I can kind of just stand in his face. Now, before you just go down into the description, you grab the POB and just load it up and are completely overwhelmed. You try to make the character you fail, blah, 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 blah. Big ducks, why does your build suck? You need to understand this isn't a build guide. The build guide will be coming probably in a couple of days. Look forward to that. Um, it'll have full progression from step one all the way to step 10, going from like one divine on a character, like maybe you're just league starting or something like that, all the way up to like the three or 400 divines that I have invested in my character. It'll have progression, it'll have the different kind of farming strategies that you should be doing, what it's good for, what items to get, all of that kind of stuff, all of the basics explained. In the meantime, however, my character is down there. Understand that I'm not supporting this character whatsoever. So if you try it out and it doesn't work for what you're trying to do, I warned you. Now let's talk a little bit about what this character is for. So. 
I made this character specifically to farm tier 17s. That's what I wanted to do. Now, there are a couple tier 17s that you can farm effectively. I've been able to kill every tier 17 boss somewhat comfortably with this gear, but the bosses that it tends to be best for are going to be the trio, which is on Abomination. That's probably the best boss that this is for. And then the boss here of Fortress. Those two tend to be easier than the other ones. Now I've done all of the other tier 17 bosses and killed them with bad mods and all that kind of stuff, but less fun. Now, when it comes to tier 17s, the thing about it is that it doesn't really matter what build you're playing. If the build has a reasonable amount of gear, I'm talking like a mirror or less, you really just can't do some mods, especially some combinations of mods. Now, if you're playing, say even like I took this build and I got, you know, a double corrupted shield and a double corrupted chess piece and I had a perfectly rolled Defiance of Destiny, perfect jewels, uh, like a better wand, better helmet, all that kind of stuff, then yeah, I could probably do whatever I wanted. But we're talking about taking a build from 400 divines to like it, five mirrors or more, right? not realistic when it comes to these tier 17s because these are just the hardest base maps that ggg has ever put in the game now you might think well what about valdos from last league valdos are not part of the main intended way for you to play the game right like this is the intended mapping mechanic the whole idea of this was progression you would go up to tier 16s farm up tier 17s maybe fight a couple normal pinnacle bosses do tier 17 maps and then fight uber pinnacle bosses. I think that progression is kind of messed up right now because tier 17 maps are way harder than ubers. Just understand you will have to roll these aggressively no matter what build that you are playing. You can't just run any mods. If you can run any mods, you don't need to be watching this video. You don't need to be listening to me at all because you already know what you're doing. But that's the idea. On average, whenever I am running a map, I will be rolling these maps with probably 15, 20 chaos at the very least. I'm looking for maps that have high currency, high scarabs, and don't have any mods that just disable my character. In particular, like this map has players are marked for death, completely undoable. I think it's undoable on any build that exists out there, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, but then there's things like players are assaulted by bloodstained saw blades. These are doable mods, but they're not fun mods. You're gonna have to deal with some kind of sucky mod in basically any map that you run, because they're all gonna have something, right? Like unique bosses have a random shrine buff or accompanied by synthesis bosses or area contains petrification statues. These mods are overcomable. They're just really annoying and they change the way that you play the game fundamentally. So just be aware, before you jump into any build and try to do tier 17s, you're gonna have to roll these aggressively and make sure that there's no mods that you can't handle. Now, let's talk a little bit about the basics of this character. So if you're familiar with my wand builds from last league, this is Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation. The whole idea is that we use Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation, it shoots out a bunch of projectiles, they can shotgun, meaning every projectile can hit, and we use returning projectiles to be able to overlap them, as you saw there at the end, on the boss that you're standing on top of. This allows us to get an absurd amount of damage. Now, if you're asking, can you use Kinetic Blast? Sure, it's gonna be terrible on bosses, but if you're doing like tier 16 map farm, Kinetic Blast is amazing. It's going to feel absolutely excellent and you'll have no problems. But for tier 17s, you really need the single target. Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation kind of feels required. You can sort of get away with Kinetic Blast, but as soon as you try to fight those bosses at the end of the map, you're gonna struggle a little bit. Nothing really different there from any of the builds that I put out last league. The big difference here is the defenses. Now, once again, shout out to Neurotoxus is where I originally saw this idea first last league. I'm not sure if he made it, but this is what a lot of the people playing Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation and Kinetic Blast on Pee Ninja have been using. Is this set up with the PhD shield as well as Tempered by War and Defiance of Destiny? I'm not going to go in depth as to how this shield works. All that you really need to know is that this combination of mods does a few things. One, it makes it so that if you combine this with Tempered by War, you take no cold damage and no lightning damage. The only way that you can take cold or lightning damage is if you attempt to convert physical damage taken into cold or lightning damage. You can't convert damage taken multiple times. The calculations all happen at one time, so you can't use things like Taste of Hate or you can't use things like uh, Lightning Coil. Those do not work. They will get you killed, especially if you have low resistance. By all other metrics, you take no cold and lightning damage, meaning you're only taking fire and chaos damage. So what that means is that we are able to skip out on cold and lightning resist completely and focus on chaos and fire. Now, on top of this, this combination does give you a lot of maximum fire resistance possible, as well as a bunch of maximum chaos resist. 
The only other unique thing that this shield realistically does is it has this mechanic where it makes it so that you can't regen or recover energy shield, but if you saw in the map that I was playing earlier, my energy shield was kind of going like this. You can leech energy shield and you can get energy shield from flasks. And what it does is that every time you fill your energy shield bar, for about four or five seconds, you get plus five maximum all resistances, meaning that we've got 90 fire and 89 chaos resist, with uh with this node that i've got up here which is born of chaos you don't need this but it is what it is you could just use spiteful presence in a like a small cluster if you really wanted to use this it would be similar amounts of points and you would have the same effect but born of chaos is quite nice so that accounts for all of our elemental damage and all of our chaos damage and then we use cloak of flame as well as some stuff on our helmet to convert a whole bunch of the physical damage that we take into fire damage which means that we are relatively tanky against big hits. Now, when it comes to smaller hits, typically the way the builds on the right side of the tree deal with this are they stack spell suppression so that they don't get one shot by spells and they get things like evasion. However, we are using Defiance of Destiny. This essentially eliminates all small hits. Anytime that we are about to take a hit, it gives us 37% of our unreserved life back before the hit ever happens. When you combine this with our large amount of recovery as well as our large effective hit pool, we're nigh unkillable, but not completely unkillable. That's the differences between this build and the ones that I was playing last league is mainly in the defensive layers. We're still doing the same exact thing with Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation. All of that's exactly the same. Now we are automating a couple of spells and there is one thing that I have done differently in that I am spell slinging two spells now. I'm spell slinging Sniper's Mark and I'm spell slinging Enfeeble. You could swap this Enfeeble with Frost Bomb if you wanted to, if you needed to like cut some regeneration on enemies. You could swap it with Punishment if you wanted to. You could even use Herald of Purity here if you really wanted to. But but this makes it so that every time I'm attacking, I am making sure to hit things with Sniper's Mark as well as Enfeeble, which is making me a lot tankier, and this is a big source of our damage. Now, to address the cost of this build, I know a lot of people are going to see this character and be like, oh, yeah, 400 Divine. Typical streamer build, right? You're spending all that money, and it's the only reason that the character works. Not, not exactly. I do think that if you want to be comfortable in Back to Basics Tier 17s, you need a character similar in quality to this. However, you could drop the Mage Blood and you could use Headhunter. That would work perfectly fine. You would need to change these flasks into like, instead of the increased effect, you would want to get um, like gain three charges on being hit and drop the, uh, the craft on them and change it to like use when charges are full. You don't want to use the Progenesis. Um, if you had a little bit of money, you could probably use something like Dying Sun or Aureus End. If not, you could just use another um, like normal blue flask if you wanted to, probably a Quicksilver or something like that. As for Nemus, you could swap this out with Death Rush. That would be perfectly fine. You would need to put returning projectiles into your main link instead of Awakened Vicious Proj. If you can't afford Awakened Fork, um, I mean, you could use hypothermia, you could use pretty much any other damage gem that you wanted to, but if you did do that and you wanted to clear with this ability, you're going to have to get some kind of pierce, which means that you'd have to take these nodes on the tree. All this kind of stuff is gonna be covered in the build guide whenever I put that out in a couple of days, but if you're really itching to figure all that out right away, you can do all of that yourself. As for crafting the wand, um, there is a tool, I think a PewDiePie YouTuber named Milky put together a graveyard craft for fizz wands. I will link that down in the description if you're interested in that. It's relatively straightforward. It does require a decent amount of prep and it is an annoying graveyard craft, but fizz wands are easier to craft this league than they ever have been. My one graveyard craft gave me like, I don't know, three that were viable, I think. Yeah, like I crafted this one. Um, I crafted this one, and then there is this base one as well that I haven't crafted yet. But either way, um, they're relatively easy to craft nowadays. And besides that, the rest of this is just like basic fractured gear, essence up a second mod until you get a third one, and then use Eldritch Currency to finish it off. Um, similar with this right here, just craft what you can get. On the tree, when it comes to jewels, yeah, I've got quite a few different expensive jewels. Like, you're never going to be able to get this Megalomaniac. Um, this watcher's eye is going to be super expensive, but you don't need this kind of stuff. More information on that when I come out with the full build guide. But yeah, it's expensive because it kind of has to be, but there are options that will be cheaper whenever I do get that out. And that's going to be it for the video. Now, as I said, look forward to build guide coming in probably a couple of days with like smooth progression all the way from step one all the way to the end, including like strategies to farm stuff that you can use at different levels of gear, all that kind of good stuff, all the normal stuff you expect from me. 
I'm kind of getting a little bit more time now, so hopefully you'll get a little bit more content from me at least for a couple of weeks here while uh, the league is still live. But remember, boys, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos, and stay safe out there in Ray Class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.